everybody, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this really neat face mask. It's really nice. It really covers most of your face. Um, a lot of people seem to like it. A lot of my friends and my family and stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Okay, everybody, this is how I make my mask. Um, these are templates that I am getting off of the Cricut Design. They have these free templates for all the people that have Cricut access. And what I did was I took these templates and I printed them out on cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I will Xerox copy these and I'll put these on a PDF and I'll put them on the link of the video so that way you guys can just print them out and also make, you know, just cut them out and then use these as templates for when you're cutting your fabric. So there are two sides to the mask. This is the front side and I'm going to um, put it on there for you guys to see that when you cut it, cut it out, you know, I'll Xerox it like this way. This is the, the large one is the front. The small one is the back. Now you're going to need two pieces of each. Now in order to make two exact pieces, I wanna show you how I cut it. What I do is I take the fabric. This is the fabric that I'm gonna use. This is an Asian inspired fabric that I get off out of, you know, I, I when I picked it up from Joann's, it's pretty popular, a lot of the folks like it. So anyway, um, but, and then this is just a fat quarter fabric that I got from Walmart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece first, which is the back. And I'm going to use this as the back fabric. So in order to cut two pieces of this, what I do is I take this and I just fold it in half. Take this, put it over. Make sure you have enough to cut the uh, fabric. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can trace this if you want and then use a scissor and cut it. I find it easier to use a rotier, ro, rotor cutter or rotier cutter. You guys know what I mean. You see it. So, anyway, <laughs> you know, my, uh, my, my pronunciation of certain words just doesn't come out right. So, anyway, I'm going to cut around. Don't cut the paper also. Just cut around the template as close as you possibly can. Don't worry if you're not that precise. And be careful you don't move it the way I just did. Cut around as precise as you can. If, if you're not that precise, don't worry about it. I mean, we're sewing, so it'll, it'll come out. All right, so I cut it in half. And I think I need to change my blade because it's not cutting all the way, but it's okay. Sometimes this happens, and I think this is because I probably have a dull blade. Take some scissor. Cut around, just a little loose. There you go. Okay. Now, because I folded it, of course you have this. Take your scissors and cut in half. And something I learned also: these are ginger scissors. They're pretty pricey, but I think they're worth the money. Um, actually, very good. They they cut very well. Um, I learned the hard way. Also, never use your fabric scissors cutting paper because it dulls the scissor and then it makes it hard for you to cut the fabric. So once you cut it in half and you trace it and you cut it once, then look, you have your two pieces for your mask. This is the back, okay? Now we will need to cut the front. So I'm gonna use this fabric once again. You know, I do have two. If you have directional, directional fabric, make sure that this is the bottom of your mask so you want to make sure that you position this so that you know the bottom of the mask or you that you fold the uh the fabric so that way you don't have your words or your pictures upside down so you know remember this is the bottom and this is the top of your mask so i'm going to cut around to the front And I just didn't 
put enough pressure the first time. So hopefully I'm going to push down. Be careful with your fake your fingers. I already sliced my finger like twice. And it's not fun. That, that hurts. Um, you know, it wasn't serious, serious where I go to the doctor. But still, these scissors are pretty. Yeah, I think I might have to change my blade. It's not. Uh, hmm. You guys get the point. I'm just gonna, there you go. There you go. All right, so here, I got my two pieces. All right, now let's go to the sewing machine. You don't need your templates anymore. All you need this was just to, to cut and let's sew that. So we're gonna walk over here to the sewing machine. Okay, now one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna put the pretty sides of your fabric together. So. Just take them and flip them. Oh, I forgot to cut there. I'm making mistakes. Remember, you need them two separate pieces. There you go. All right, now you're gonna flip them. Okay. Line them up. Same thing here. Just flip them. And it's just solid fabric, so you don't really have to, but. And there's something that I wanna show you on the machine that I use to measure, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're going to sew from here, and you're gonna go all the way down, and you're gonna sew up to here, okay? Now let me put this on the fresh pressure foot so that you can see. And another thing too, that um, I find very helpful, your speed on your SC1900, okay? Very slow, medium, um, fast. Okay, start with medium, or if you're not very confident, do the slow. Don't, you know, don't be afraid. I mean, take your time and stuff. I do them kind of fast because I've been doing a lot of these. Now, as I put this down, I also want to show something to you so that you can see how I, I line it up. Notice how I put this here and this kind of lines up like right here, right? So watch when I start sewing um, how I do it, okay? And I I backstitch a little. You don't have to backstitch too much. Um, oh, and hold on. I want to change my thread. Sorry. I'm using white thread. I like to use the thread that matches the fabric. So it's a quick change. Um, okay, black thread. In. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is five. Remember, you go around, go like this, go wee, like that, like that, like that, because there's a little hook in there and it's going to catch it. There's a number six. Number six over there. Don't forget number six. I forgot number six when I first started sewing, and that's going to mess you up. So then number seven, and then in the back you have here number eight, which is the cutter, okay? You usually don't have to do number eight, but you can do number eight. And then here's number nine. And just hit your little thing down, and then it's gonna thread your machine, okay? And I always pull it out. Now, something that my mom showed me about this foot that I didn't I had no idea. Mommy showed me about it. In this, you have this little slit right here. Right? I was just going like this when I was sewing. And she just went and she just put the thread right in that little slit. And then she pulled it back. I, I guess that's a neater way to sew. Something that she showed me and I was kind of like, oh. Now, oh. Changing my bobbin. Remember, the bobbin's this way. You're pulling it this way, okay? Pop it in. You put the thread under here. Follow the, uh, the little arrows. And then cut, okay? You put that there. It's really important that you make sure that you put the threads in the machine correctly. So that way you get a, a decent thread. Oh, here we go again. All right, so we're gonna start all over again. Remember 
how I said that I always line this up to here. So that way, you know, as I sew it, I have a straight even tip. So now I'm gonna start sewing and I back stitch a little bit and then pay attention to how this, I keep it aligned here or I try as much as I can. So just, and let, let the, the walking foot or the dog feet or whatever let it walk the fabric. I used to push it until a friend of mine told me, let the machine do the work. And every time now I sew, Robin's always in my mind because she says, let the machine do the work. And I'm gonna go a little slow so you can see. See, so just, just there you go. And then go back and then cut your thread. This is the button to cut the thread. And then there you go. All right, now same thing for the other one. Okay, I'm gonna go a little faster because I already showed you. I do the same thing, the way I, I measure it, put it in, and then I'm just gonna put the speed a little faster and, you know, because I don't want the video to show up. Just like butter. Okay, there you go. And then I backstitch. All right, now we're gonna go to the cutting table, okay? Now. This is where you get picking shears. There's two ways you can do this. You need to cut some of this because if not, then when you sew it together, it's gonna like bulk up, right? Something called picking shears is this, okay? This is pretty neat because it does it really quick. See? Now when you're cutting this, do not cut the stitches and try not to cut too close to the stitches. I did that and then it started falling apart. So don't, um, just, it's just to trim off some of the edges. If you don't have these scissors, not a problem. Take your regular scissors and then do this. Little snips. It, it's just as effective. Just do little snips like that. Don't cut your stitches. You can do that. And then another thing too is while you do that, you can also just trim off a little bit if you want. You know, just trim it. So that way you don't have all that extra material in there. There you go, okay? All right, now we're gonna go to the ironing board, okay? Now, this is a Panasonic ironing board that I use. I like it because it's wireless and you can move everywhere with it. So that's why I like that one. I know that they have these uh, smart irons now. I've been looking at those. The only thing I don't like about it is that um, it's got a wire and uh, it's a little pricey, but I don't know. I seem to be happy with this. So I think I'm gonna stick with this iron. I kind of like it, it's a Panasonic. I got it off of Amazon too. I think I buy everything from Amazon. It's fast. All right, so just fold this down and then I flip it and then I fold it again, like a quarter of an inch, okay? And then you take your iron and you iron it down and then I just put a little steam. And it's really to make that crease. And I iron the rest of it too to make it nice and straight. Same thing with the other one. The reason why I do, I, I fold it this way is so that I can make sure that they're even before I iron it. You don't want to fold one, you know, so I kind of do it both together. And then I iron the whole thing, you know, it's just to, any wrinkles, get them out. That way it's nice and straight. Now, back to the sewing machine. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew what we just ironed, okay? I usually do this in the fast, but like I said, if you're just starting to learn how to sew, to go slow don't you don't have to rush it and stuff so
See, you're just sewing it down. That's all you're doing. Go to the other side. And sometimes you'll notice it's a little off. That's okay, don't worry. What's important is that you sew this down. four size just all right so now you got that right so if you notice this is how it looks so far you got the front and then this is the back notice how the back is shorter okay that's how it is so you know that's okay. Now what you're going to do is take this. This is the back. And you're going to flip it. And, you know, just go like this with your fingers. You're flipping it, right? Now this is a, the little tricky part here. You're going to feed this in here. This is the pretty side. This is the pretty side. So you're going to feed it. And then I want you to pay attention right here. Look at the seams right here. This seam and this seam. You're gonna marry it together like that, okay? Now to keep it together, what I do is I pin it. So I take a little pin, poke it in, and then I pin it down, okay? I pin it this way, I tried pinning it that way, the fabric will shift on you. So, but, so pin it up from up to down. Then what you do is just play with it. Let Relax your hands and let the fabric fall. And you're gonna see how it just kind of like falls in. Then put it under the machine, just play with it a little bit and then see how it falls. This is how you're gonna sew. Now, you know the same concept when we were sewing this, you know, before when we were sewing this side, right? I look at this, I do the same thing. I put it under the foot. When I lay it down, I use this as a guide. You know, I'm putting all my fabric under here. And then go slow. Do not use the fast one here, okay? Go slow. If you wanna go super slow, go super slow, it's fine. You're going to backstitch also. Backstitch is you're gonna tack it down so that, cause we're gonna flip this over and you don't want the stitches to come apart. So we're gonna start and then back stitch with your back stitch button on your SC. See, and I'm back stitching. Okay, now I'm gonna forward and you're gonna twist your fabric under the foot. And go slow, don't go fast. Because even I mess up, I mess up big time when I um go fast on this and then when you get here this is a little tricky notice how the fabric see how it, it'll, it'll fall naturally it'll fall naturally and then just you know maneuver it you know just and then you gotta you gotta turn the fabric under see and be careful you know because sometimes i got a heavy foot so you know sometimes i gotta watch it and be very careful how i hit the pedal and, you know, just turn it. Turn the fabric, you know, so that way. And then when you get to here, back stitch. Cut it. You're done. Okay, so you got this. The other side, same thing. Take the two seams that you have here, you know. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put them together. Take a pin. In, down, so that way it doesn't move, okay? Same thing, let it flow. See how it flows naturally? So just let it fall. And then you're just gonna sew across and, you know, backstitch. Okay. See how you just... Nice and neat. Okay. 
button, go back stitch, cut your fabric. Okay, put the pin down, put it back. These are really great too, if you get a chance. These are the magnetic holders. I like them because they just hold your pins like that. I like these actually better. I bought a whole bunch, but this is really cool. This is another Amazon. I got it off of Amazon. I get everything off Amazon. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the cutting table. Okay. This is bulky right here. So what I usually do is I take the scissor and I just cut across right here. Okay. Not too close to the stitches though. Then I take my picking shears. And if you don't have picking shears again, you could just do little slits. I'll, I'll do the slits because I know not everybody has the pinking shears. So I'm going to do this one with slits, okay? I love to do it. But, you know, if you can get them, they're pretty good. They're, you know. Now what you're going to do is turn it inside out. Now we're going to go to the ironing board after this. Okay, turn it inside out. Play with it with your hand. See, this is the front. This is the back. Now let's go to the ironing board. Okay, now I got my, my iron on medium. So what I do here is, you know, you, you want to lay down the fabric. I put the front down. Put your hand in. And, you know, poke out the thing. You want to form the mask with your hand. You know, just go like this. See? And you want to take out the edges. Now, this sometimes will, you know, it's going to curve on you. Let it curve on you. That's going to help you. I'll show you. And then take the iron. And you just plop it in there. I put steam so that I can iron it real good. Get all the wrinkles out. And if it folds like that, that's okay. All right. See? Now you take the other side. Same thing. Now sometimes you'll see a little wrinkle in there because, you know, but that's, that's okay. Don't worry about that. And then I just... You know, just play with it and iron it. This here. Okay, then you're gonna just, you know, open it in half. See, the mask is almost done. It doesn't take long. And then I just iron it again, you know, flatten it out a little bit. I like the mask to be nice and flat. I'm going to get a clapper, too. I just ordered it online. A clapper is something that, you know, for steam, for when you steam a fabric or something. It's a wooden thing. I don't know when I'll get it. Okay, now we're ready for the elastic, okay? This is what we're going to do. I use the thin elastic. I like this. I don't like the big bulky ones. What I do is I use it nine and a half. A lot of other folks that are making masks, they do like eight inches, and then you hear people complaining that it hurts their ears. It's true, it does. <laughs> so don't, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, I do nine and a half, it works for me. So I just go like this, and I cut them, these are snips, Amazon. <laughs> okay, I gotta get everything from Amazon, okay. Go. Okay, so I got these two. So, this is what we're going to do. Clean this up. I like this. I have everything nice and clean so that you guys don't get confused about nothing. Okay. Now, we're going to open it up. I always like to clean it up too. You know, I don't like loose, loose threads. Okay. Take this, lay it down. Okay, this, this also, this messed me up sometimes because sometimes when I'm messing with it, I pull it out and then I, you know, you gotta, you, you mess up. So lay it down. You're gonna take this and you're gonna tuck it in here. So I pick this up and then I just fold it in. 
just play with it. Just fold it in. And it's going to lay down nice and flat. You know, you try to snug it in as much as you can. You know, till it looks nice. See? Look at how nice. Now what you're going to do is to keep this down, you're going to sew across. And the reason why you want to sew across and don't sew this way is because this is going to be a pocket for people to put a paper towel or coffee filter or something like that. So go to your machine. And this is the other thing too. I want you to be careful. Move this. Feel this with your fingers. You know where the elastic is. Do not sew on the elastic. You want to sew on. You could feel it with your fingers where the fabric is. That's what you want to tackle down. So Go there, and this is a tip here on the speed. Slow. Do slow. Sometimes I have a heavy foot, and then what happens is that I end up zoom. So, nope, you want to go slow. You don't want to sew the elastic. So, I'm slow. It's just to go back, and then go forward. Cut on the other side same thing back I mean forward then go back then go forward cut okay go in here I lift this up go like this I know where the elastic is. Move your elastic a little bit. Don't pull it because you don't want to pull that out. But you want to feel the elastic in here because you don't want to go over the elastic. And then I just try to go as further as I can here. And then I just go a little bit. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to do it over 20 times. Just three times is good. One or two, you know, two or three times. It's okay. Now. Cut out your thing. Be very careful you don't pull the, the elastic out. Because I've done that several times. And then, you know, I'm like, ugh. Okay. Clean it up. And this is why I wanted to use the black thread. See how nicely it goes on the fabric? You don't even see the, the, the stitches, really. Take this. And tie a knot. Try to make the knot so that it goes, you know, not too close to here, but, you know, enough. And then see, because you didn't sew on the elastic, the elastic moves. So you can take that and put that at the bottom of the mask. Same thing here. I'm going to go a little faster because I did it super slow on the other one. So Let's make sure that. It's tucked in nice and neat. You know, just lay it, lay it like that. Make sure it's nice and feel that. And I, I go slow on this because I don't want to mess up the elastic or anything like that. So. Make sure you feel the elastic, you know, with the elastic set so you don't sew on top of that. And this is just tacked down because if you don't do this one, then what happens is it's going to look tacky when they put it on their face because then this is going to open up. Okay, clean it up. Be careful you don't pull the elastic. I always tell myself that because I've done it. And clean it up. I have a nice little loose thread that I see around here. Got to be careful I don't cut that elastic. Let's turn it around. You're not. Okay. Go back to the ironing board. You know, no loose threads. Everything's cute. 
See, look how pretty. Steam it up. We'll make it nice and neat. Look how cute. Gotta take that other elastic and move it up to the side. See? And there you have it. A nice face mask. Messed up. I also sell these on my um, Etsy shop. I'll put the link to my Etsy shop below in case you guys want to buy one. But make it. Make it yourself, you know, and stuff. So this is a good little thing. So hope you like this video. Hope it was helpful. If there's something that you need me to explain further, let me know and stuff. Give me a thumbs up. Bye.